Yeah, it'll be interesting to see, of course, Cuck has had the last couple of hours to play two matches and warm up. Um, one E, I'm sure, have been warming up and practicing as well. I know they're a team that's very good at doing that, so it'll be interesting to see uh, what type of form each team comes into this match with. Is Cuck tired from playing so many matches, or are they the type of team that is better when they play a bunch of matches in a row? We'll, we'll find out. We'll see if they got any of that Cuck magic left. Yep. <laughs> 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 that cock magic we love to watch. <laughs> ah, it's the good stuff. It's the good stuff. All right. So it seems like Anton is attacking, so we should be live. Look at that. Even some some decent sportsmanship getting involved. Not <laughs> not the typical cuck way. P Pie Jacker says, GG, we lose. <laughs> and Kalenka, <laughs> starting out pretty strong, taking off some picks. It can't be in Zed, getting picks as well. Straight off the bat. So y'all were asking about the whole picker strategy. You can see how it can't be in Zed are doing the exact thing. How they're on one side and not picking, and the rest of the team is rotated all the way over to the other side. So Interesting that's the to see there. it can't be in Zed taking that role. Traditionally on this team, Emperor has been one of the primary pickers, but maybe him taking a back foot on that now that they've recruited two of the best pickers in North America right now. Interesting to see. Emperor leading the charge right now. Yeah, Emperor may be moving into a more aggressive role than he used to play, which would be interesting to see. I think it might suit him more, actually, as a player, to play more aggressively and have more room in the team, because it used to be he was kind of had to be the hard carry for his team, and I think you give him more space, and I think he might be able to perform better. We just we just saw a full wipe from 1E there, taking over the trench all at once. Uh, it doesn't seem that uh, any of, of Zed's crew uh, even died in that, in that push. Yeah, we're looking at a 1E that's coming in in the best form we've seen them in a very long time. Having They came in third in the... Uh, in, in the and the uh, VCL only losing to Air, who now have disbanded, uh, and also losing to PC. Obviously, PC a very strong team. Um, they they they've been playing together this group of people for a while now, and then adding it can't be and Zed really just strengthens this lineup. Filtrated Bread, a player that played with them for a long time, uh, just as a friend, he was never on their team, but now that he's on their team, he definitely knows knows a lot of these players and knows how they play. This is going to be a team that I think has some really good chemistry. Um, and yeah, Cuck just getting... Wow, Cuck having trouble getting out of their spawn right now. That was something else. Yeah, Cuck are a good team, but 1E just on another level. We were hoping this would be a close match, but as, a, as, I, as I worried a little bit, this, this 1E team, they came to play. Yeah, cucks are getting cucked right in the cuck. <laughs> one e, one e is not going to stop until they're in the finals, and 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 they're not going to even stop then. I think they want to win this tournament. Emperor has been a, a strong player in this scene for a very long time. Never won himself a title. I think he's going to really be wanting that title right about now. And we can really see it. They've really put the work in. They've been scrimming over the last couple of weeks with various teams. They've been practicing a lot, uh, and, and that work they put in is really showing here. Just absolutely insane. Emperor 13 kills, Zed 6 and 0. Oh. It can't be with 4 kills. Vetrix with 5. So I guess uh, give us an idea of, of, of exactly what uh, 1E is doing that Cuck just cannot. Uh, at the moment, um, well, what, first is, off, is it just is it just a that big of a skill gap, or is it? Uh, is... I mean, it really is. Let's just put it this way: any of these players on on one E could could be pickers and cut. Like cut, it's just that next level skill. You take your best players and you make them pickers on any, no matter what team you're on. And it's just that every single player on one E is as good as cut cut's pickers. Like that's the problem. Like it's a depth thing. Obviously, players like Kalinkadink, players like uh, Who Am I Blowing in the Black Hand, these are good players. It's just the depth on that team isn't there. And when you have a team as deep as 1E, it's just very difficult to defeat them when you have less depth in your skill. 
uh, this whole one just... he is playing. Um, I think that was a. Uh, yeah, I think that was a uh, cuck RD that was called on the one E left side. And then they immediately moved out of the trench before the RD even hit. I don't think anyone actually died to it. Well, that's another thing you're going to see from 1E. I, I, I was really excited when Filtrated Bread was added to this team because one thing that 1E has always lacked is sort of these skilled, like, strategic-minded players, and Filtrated Bread is really that type of player. Uh, he's not, like, a, a really high-level strategy player, or he hasn't proved himself as that yet because he's never really been on a team where he was allowed to lead. Um, uh, but I think he's really going to add a lot of value to this team, maybe not necessarily in the fragging department, but definitely in the, the sort of strategy department as a leader. So I think that's helping them a lot. That sort of movement that we just saw getting away from that artillery is not something we might have necessarily seen from them in the past. But making big improvements with their, both their roster and their training regimen, I think, uh, is going to help them in, in places like that. I mean, it's just that. I mean, 1E is a team that practices multiple times a week. They scrim multiple times a week. Like, they're just probably playing the game more than a team like Cuck is. And they're putting the work in, and they've been playing longer. I mean, most of the players on this team have been playing this game for three-plus years. It's just... Or, or they're just extremely talented. Players like Zed and MJ are young players who've only been around for about a year, but they've been playing the game a lot in that amount of time, and they're extremely talented. I just think it goes to show how big of a depth change there has been in this team, because if any of you in the stream watch the VCL, you'll notice MJ. MJ was the standout player for 1E in this uh, VCL season. And, and, th and that was a very different 1E team. They were a lot had a lot less depth. Now look at the depth they have. MJ is the bottom fragger on this team. We're talking about a player who was one of the stars of this team in their previous form. And now- That's not to it, say MJ's gotten bad this team. No, is MJ, actually... yeah. No, MJ is still an excellent player. It's just that the amount of depth on this team is just ridiculous. Uh, yeah, everything. <clears throat> everyone else has accelerated behind him uh this I, I gotta say guys i i i was not expecting this good guy <laughs> uh the uh it, yeah it, it reminds me of of the jump like from uh college football to professional football or something it's like no, that's really the, what it is the discussion always comes up you know would it like it, because there's always a great college football team in the middle of the year um, and they say, would this amazing college football team be able to beat up on this bad NFL team? <clears throat> and the, the fact is, is that that NFL team has 50-plus uh, NFL-quality players, um, while a college team does not. Uh, a college team has a handful of those guys, kind of like you're saying with the pickers on the cucks. Uh, they, just, they just have that skill across the board. Yeah, exactly. No, uh, I mean, yeah. This, I mean, I think we're probably going to see something similar like this in our PC versus uh, SMW match. Um, the real epicness of tomorrow is going to be that 1E versus PC match. That's going to be, with with 1E in a form like this, like we've never seen them before, PC is obviously a very good team as well, and they've won a, players on that team have a lot of accolades. Um, this is probably the the closest we've the, a team this team is the most likely team to dethrone that pc team this one e team as you're seeing right now is very very good uh are we gonna see an early finish here at uh at 2 -0? i mean yeah I'd, I'd be surprised if cuck is gonna be able to come back and capture anything at this point not only to, are they just lacking in skill and the difference in teamwork? I mean, they've killed quite a few of 1E right now, but you can tell there's just a fear in them. Even when most <laughs> of 1E is dead, they're not even pushing up. They're afraid. They're afraid of even those two players who are left alive. Yeah, wow. Yeah, the organization from 1E just seems uh, top-notch. Um while uh, the the uh, the cuck team, uh, I mean, one of the it's, one of these players is still just trying to figure out who he's blowing. It's honestly <laughs> seriously, it's amazing. It's amazing to watch him pick at the players from such a distance and just one shot him. It's 
It's oh, amazing, the precision. yeah. Yeah, the precision is Emperor and Chirpy have been added, like there's no tomorrow. Yeah, these players really are just excellent about long range. Th this is why I, I thought that Kuck might be able to give 1E a, a, a bit of a challenge, but when I saw that the map was going to be Iron, that was just a huge mistake from Kuck. They lost this map in the map ban. They, there's no way they can challenge the pickers of 1E on a long range map like this. It's just, it's just not going to happen. And the other thing is, 1E have such good communication that you'll notice that if one of them dies to someone, immediately someone else is killing them. Even if they're across the map, their communication is, is very good. They know where the enemy team is at all times. Uh, they're just doing a very good job this, this entire way. So wow, think, I never uh, thought I'd see it. Piejacker yeah, yeah. is running away. <laughs> is, could, could Zab be scared? I don't know. We'll have to see. Honestly, knowing like him, he's probably not. <laughs> uh, yeah. For for those of us uh, those of us unfamiliar, uh, Zab uh, would appear to be now. Some someone step in and, and correct me. Zab seems to be the best player in the world. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, there have been times where there may have been people who've challenged him. People like, people like Rebel. People like, uh, I don't know. Rebel's probably the only one I can think of that's ever really challenged him as the, for the best player in the world. Can you think of anyone else? Shadow Step gave him a bit of a run for the money. Yeah, Rebel and Shadow Step, perhaps. But Zab's always in the argument. You know, the argument yeah. changes. There may be someone else that people might consider, but Zab is always there, and most of the time he's the, you know. Most of the time, everyone will say, oh yeah, Zab's the best. Like, it's, that's just, like, Zab is, in my opinion, the best player in the world, but there's no way you don't have him in your top two right now. I mean, I don't even, I can't even think of anyone who challenges him right now that's active in the scene. I just can't think of anyone. Um, now that's not, I, obviously this is a team game, and even though Zab is the best player in the world, the real question is, is 1E better than PC? That's going to be the question. Um, and I guess we'll have to find out. The only way we're going to find out is when these two teams clash, and it is going to be an epic clash. Indeed. Uh, I know uh, I know. you mentioned uh, that, that Zed... Uh, Seem to have some kind of personal falling out with Zab. Uh, uh, was was it a a lovers quarrel? <laughs> Perhaps. Um, <laughs> That's complicated. <laughs> there was, was, there it, was a while. Did it have anything to do with It's Cox. complicated, and I think both sides agree that it was really blown out of proportion. So yeah, but uh, were they the teammates? Thing. They were teammates. Z Zed was on PC. There were moments where Zed was called the mini Zab. Um, uh, he was. If if you're going, that. if you're going to make a contestant for Zed being the best player in the world, Zed is probably the player that would come in after that. To be honest, yeah. Zed maybe doesn't have as much discipline as Zab. Doesn't play as much. Doesn't have the practice ethic that Zab had. And I think that's where a lot of their disagreements kind of arose. Um, but they're both brilliant players, and there's no debating that. Um, like say, let's take a look. Lieben I mean, some players on Cuck aren't doing bad. Look at Kalinkadink. Somehow managing to be positive despite the absolute mm -hmm. thrashing his team is receiving. Who am I blowing? Not too far behind him. And, uh, and Pijacker's run and gun strategy seems to be just completely neutralized by, uh, by the precision from, from 1E. Well, like I said, that sort of communication, that long-range uh, ability can really shut down a player like that. He's not being able to get into the situations where he's successful, so he's not having any success. But again, it's just a depth problem. There are good players on Cuck. There's just not as many good players on Cuck as there is on one E. I also don't think Cuck has played nearly as long as one he has. Like, 
when he has players going in and out, don't get me wrong, the roster does change, but they still have the same core players, and they've no, always had players, the same core players from the beginning. Yeah, players like uh, Emperor, Chirpy, Kyle Zephyr, MJ, they've been playing together for quite some time. Vetrix as well. Vetrix, yeah, and, uh, Vetrix and Emperor have been playing together basically since the beginning of this game. Uh, so, so uh, when we do indeed, uh, uh, if and when we see uh, that showdown between uh, Zed, Zab, uh, PC, and One E, uh, wh what can we expect as far as uh, uh, a pace of gameplay uh, strategically from each team? How, do, how does that change when you're looking at two teams that are at that high of skill level? Certainly, teams will be probably be more cautious in their aggression. We're going to see the beginning of rounds start with people feeling each other out and a lot of picking. Um, once picks are made and a team is given a numbers advantage, that's probably when we'll see pushing. We probably won't see pushing very much when teams are on even numbers. They're going to want to pick off some of the enemy team before they push. Um, the pace is definitely going to be probably slowed down. Um, it really depends on how close it is. I mean, we don't really know for sure what the skill gap between this 1A team and this PC team is. They've never really had a proper match against each other since these two teams formed. They've had some scrims here and there, but neither team had their full lineup for scrims because scrims, you know, it's hard, hard to schedule scrims and sometimes certain players won't be able to make it. So the, the, the trouble comes when we have the best eight players on 1E playing the best eight players on PC what does that look like? We haven't seen that before, and this is going to be the first time we get to see that, and that's that's why we're we're really excited about tomorrow and, and what we're going to find out. Uh, give me a second, guys. I mean, it it really is a question that can only be answered. Like, how will that match look? Is the only way that that question can be answered is by having that match be played. All right, so we do have the teams swap sides. Are we waiting on another cup player, or are they just going to be down a player? Do it you would know? be pretty cucky to see one of them rage quit. So, I would like that. I mean, it looks like that's what's going to happen because it looks like both teams wishing the GLHF so that this is going to be live. Um, mm -hmm. uh, it wouldn't surprise me if one of Cuck's players just rage quit. I, I've seen that happen in competitive matches before when people were getting stomped the way that they would, just were. Um, it's an unfortunate reality. People get frustrated. Uh, some people come to play competitively and get better. Some people come to have fun, and when you're getting stomped like that, it's just simply not fun. So those players that come for the fun usually leave when that happens. Just for clarification, we're not live right now. Oh, you're not live? We're not, okay. okay. No. I would have said it if we were. Why don't you just say that in chat to make sure that both teams are aware of that? Well, we're not live because we're done crashed for me, so... Uh, it oh. sounds like the missing, uh, the missing cuck player is actually... And they're missing players missing anyway, difficulties. So. Yeah. Yeah. Did your game crash? Stall? Yeah, it did. Oh, oh I can't type to them because I'm a spectator. But did you message both the team captains and let them know it's not live? Sorry, I forgot to meet you, Mike. I'm um, just having some technical difficulties. Looks like we will be going live in just a moment, though, as everyone is back. I think we had uh, one player from uh, Cuck crash, and uh, we had uh, Nord crash as well. But it seems like they're both back in the game, so we should be good. So it was an arrange. It was not a rain, uh, rage quit. No, just a crash. Not this time. 
We have a whole half. Which is always good to uh, see. Whatever the hell right? we just saw. <laughs> it's always good to see uh, players not rage quitting. Uh, and say what you will about cock, but they've been good sportsmen for the most part. <laughs> I say <laughs> for, nothing for about part. cock. I say absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Keep my mouth shut on that one. <laughs> All right, here we go. Yep. Second half of this uh, game, I guess we can call it. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Hey, one thing we can say is we can thank 1E for helping us keep our schedule. Indeed. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, kind of. If they kind of helps. gentlemen on 1E. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It looks like the Entente is attacking first, so we're yep. good Yeah, we should be good to go. It's kind of crazy how lucky we would have been with that. We haven't. I think there's only been one game where we've had to restart more than once to get Entente to attack first, which is crazy because I've had games where or scrims where we've had to restart like six times in order for Entente to attack first. Yeah. <laughs> So more trouble uh, getting out of spawn uh, from the cucks. We do have two cuck players um, swinging way around to the right, uh, heading up the tree line there. Uh, they are going to be met by Kyle Zephyr and MJ. This might not end well for them as they are sprinting into a trap. Kyle Zephyr and MJ, though, given the statistics of the last match, these are players that maybe Blackhand might be able to beat in a one-on-one -on -one fight. But, of course, he is going to get traded straight away because just the communication here is so we good. Do have, we do have Kalinkadink lying in wait here, uh, one of the better shooters on uh, on the Cuck team. Against Sherpy. Yeah, Against he's gonna Sherpy wait. and MJ. He's going to wait maybe for them to be a little bit more distracted by the rest of his teammates and then maybe pop out and try and take one guy down. And yeah, Cuck most of, I'm sorry. Cuck starting to play a little bit more of a passive picking game. Basically, 1E has muted pretty much all of the aggression we saw from them in the group group stage. Playing a much more passive and slow style now, which hopefully will give them more success. Uh, Cuck sending more forces to the right side, um, having absolutely no luck on the left. There, there's some irony in that statement, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, just no luck for cock whatsoever. And MJ has just been holding down this side of the map the entire time; hasn't died once. Just been holding down this position, kind of acting as an anchor for one E to prevent those pushes on the right side. And picking up three kills in the process without dying. Emperor 7 and 1, top fragging right now. We're seeing a lot less frags in general for this half of the match so far, moving a little bit slower. I think Cock realizing they're going to have to slow down their tactics if they want to have any success. And not like it's having any huge effect, but at least they're dying less, so I guess that's a positive. <laughs> gotta, gotta, gotta make improvements somewhere. There's progress <laughs> being made here. The cucks are making progress. Dragons can might be able to deal some damage here, acting as a spoiler. Coming behind them. MJ, though, aware of his position, gonna take him out. Regardless, morale looks very, very low for the uh, cuck players. Uh, we are still at a tie game here. Yeah, but I don't think that's going to last for very long. I don't think so either. And I don't know if it was for anyone else, but on my screen, one of the cuck flares just crew acro flew across a field, landed in a tree, and then had a horrible seizure. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> um... That's that Unity engine. Yep. Can ha lead to some interesting physics. Looks like cuck is going to rush very hard in on the one -E side, on the left side. And I might be able to hold that for a bit, but if this is going to go down to a numbers game, I get the feeling one is going to win quickly. 
Oof. Ah, uh, yeah. That's what it looks like. Cut getting slowly, slowly uh, wiped out there. Not as I quick as in the first half. To go. Trading a little bit more, doing a little bit more damage than they did in the first half, but it's probably not going to be enough. It does. It does seem a bit more, uh, a bit more competitive here. Um, they do seem to have taken a bit more of a, uh, a cohesive strategy going into this man, into this half. Uh, but. Uh, again, just the uh, the pure skill just seem to be overwhelming them right now. Yeah, very few kills coming in for the cuck side. Most of the kill feed starting with the letters 1E. <laughs> <laughs> Emperor having an excellent game with 14 kills right now. Yeah, this is a map where she feels very comfortable on this and Picardy, probably his best maps. MJ feeling better this round than maybe he was in the first. He's a little bit quiet in that first half, but waking up in this one. Filtrated Bread playing very well. Compared to his performances we saw in air, I think he's much more comfortable on this team just seeing the type of performance he's, he's having. Uh, I think this game, this team is giving him a lot more space to play the way he wants. And, and he feels more comfortable, I think. So that's good to see him really, uh, really coming out of his shell as a player. 1E it just uh, appears to be a firing squad right now, lined up in the trench, single file. Yeah, pretty much. Good spread. They're not going to get damaged yeah, too much by any artillery mm -hmm. strike. It They've almost got feels, lots of different angles. It almost feels unfair. <laughs> well, uh, competition isn't usually fair. <laughs> you know, whoever's better usually has I an think advantage. They, uh, they didn't teach you that when you got your American passport? <laughs> <laughs> you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like... Uh, it does appear that the cucks do uh, seem to be trying to utilize that heavier tree cover. Oh, it looks um, like they're over on this side. A, looks like they're getting a sub in. Hachiman leaving. Oh, man. Cats coming in. We're hot swapping. <laughs> hot swapping players. <laughs> and if and if uh, if 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 you're a cuck. Uh, do you wanna do you wanna jump into this game right 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 now? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I, I feel like if this was my team and I was on cuck, I wouldn't be saying put me in coach right now. I'd be like, no. Uh, <laughs> maybe not this game, coach, maybe next time. <laughs> <sighs> I mean if if we're if we're gonna compare it to uh, your more straightforward sports sports, um this, uh, I, I guess this would be like, well, let's put the freshman in, whatever. <laughs> Everything's chaos and nothing matters, so. <laughs> let's give that guy a shot. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Cucks will be putting in the water boy any time now. <laughs> Clearly, one e have been drinking their Gatorade and Cuck have not. And we have one e advancing uh, yet again uh, on this higher trench, and they're gonna cap that pretty much straight away. Yep, they have their full squad in there, full two squads, I should say. Oh, never mind. We got Kyle Zephyr struggling in back, and we have Cuck spreading out across four four squads, which is technically against the rules, but I don't think anyone's gonna hold it against them right now. Are they still in mid switch? This is this is unprecedented. I can't believe it. <laughs> yep, this is uh, pretty much just a. Uh, this is a very advantageous spot um, for these these high end shooters. No, basically, uh, basically, <laughs> cuck have to run straight across an open field, up a hill, and then they're probably dead by the time they get there. Yeah. 
Except for who am I blowing, who perhaps has made it quite far, along with cats. Kyle Zephyr, though, gonna stand there and just... Yep. No, say no. He seems says like that scene in The Last Samurai. <laughs> where they, yeah. they pull out the Gatling gun and they just go charging it anyway. Yeah. And then Tom Cruise gets slaughtered, but he doesn't. He somehow gets lit up with a... Anyway, we can review Tom Cruise movies some other time. <laughs> yes. The point is that this is a slaughter. And someone is going to... I think Kalinkadink seems like the most likely candidate for uh, some seppuku. <laughs> yes. But Dragon's Ken still putting up a decent performance, 10 and 14, not too bad. Emperor really having another dominant match here, another dominant half at uh, at 28 kills. That is uh, it is besting second place by, I mean, wow, 18, 17 kills. Yep. Yeah, he's got just about double whatever uh, metrics has. Three times whatever the highest fragger on the other team has. Okay, so we've got everybody in two squads again uh, for Entente. Uh, I, I think I think that's that's a sign of a comeback. Yeah, really. I mean, it's a great achievement to be able to be in two squads. <laughs> Perhaps the, the the most they've achieved this game is coming back from that. <laughs> <laughs> Brutal. That's not to take anything away from Cuck. They did play very well in the group stage, winning both their matches. Uh, it's just it's just a different caliber of, of team. Once you get up here into the, into the higher levels, there is a reason that 1E and PC were seated at this level. It, 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 yeah, it would have been a waste of time to have them play matches versus every team in the tournament. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the round w round robin would have been uh, wasted. We would have been casting a lot of matches like this, which would not have been as entertaining <laughs> for everyone, I don't think. I wonder if uh, I wonder if uh, Zed and Zab and these guys. I wonder if they get called hackers like just in real life. Yeah, maybe you know, just walking down the street, that mm -hmm. guy looks like a hacker to me. <laughs> He's got like a Nintendo power glove. The <laughs> <laughs> hacker man walking down the street. That's how, that's how I'm gonna forever uh, picture all of 1E right now. Like they all right before the match, they all locked into their Nintendo power gloves. With, they've got they've got VR goggles on. Uh -huh. <laughs> Uh, the ones getting <laughs> cucked now. The cucks <laughs> getting cucked. Yep. This is a really good game for Emperor. Ironic. They could save others from cucking, but not themselves. <laughs> <laughs> the great cuckening of 2017. <laughs> MJ just going to work on this far left side. And they're probably going to capture this trench relatively soon here. Emperor, this is an in, this is an Emperor interesting trench because it's less a trench and more a series of holes. Um, but they're still going to capture it, so... That's not going to stop them from continuing on their dominant rampage through the fields of uh, Ein... And another capture for them, that's gonna... Well, I won't call it 6-0 yet, but we're getting close to it. Cox once again having trouble getting out of spawn. We are gonna see we're likely gonna see another sweep here. 
Yes, in all likelihood, this is again one of those very difficult trenches to come back on. Um, very similar to that last trench on our squad. It's just an open field. They have more cover than you do. It's just... It's trouble. Though, they're doing a decent job of keeping 1E out of the super powerful positions on this trench, which is that far right, uh, kind of, there's a little bit of a hill there that you can kind of peek over and kind of see into the enemy spawn. They're doing a good job of taking out Zed, trying to go over there. Black Hand takes him out, though. But keeping your enemy out of the power positions is quite a different thing from keeping the enemy out of your trench. Cock this half have been proved to being able to keep 1E e out of the power positions, but they've not been able to keep them out of their trench, so... As far as the scoreline is concerned, it's not much of a difference. the recon plane going over we might actually see a little bit of a push coming from the cucks over on uh, on the left side here in the cornfield yeah but As, that recon oof. plane's gonna be perfectly timed just to let yep. one e know that that's happening and they're just gonna deal with it straight away indeed and looks like they are down a player once again kalinkadink perhaps uh feeling but his time was up oof that is too bad uh this will be uh wrapped up pretty quickly here i believe we'll see uh, uh this last trench go um up next uh we do have pest control uh led by the great zab uh taking on smw uh winner of one of their two games in, in group play yes Going a one and one, losing to Kak here. Uh, mm -hmm. Though, despite being rolled in, the, it's not like Tuck aren't good players. They they are good players. It's just the level of competition. Once you get this this far into the tournament, is just it's a completely different game, really. It's it's interesting because I, I bet uh, I bet the uh, I bet the the Cuck team uh, probably stomps in a lot of the pubs they play. Oh, no, um, certainly. But this is just, uh, yeah, as you're saying, this is just another level. It gets a whole different ball game, that's for sure. So we see Emperor there with uh, probably his best game. Um, Five kills, yeah. Or one, yeah, one of the best games we've seen from an individual here. 